الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد وعلیٰ علیہ وصحب وسلم As we're winding up this holy month and we're looking for Laylatul Qadr, one of the important things that I'm reminded of and have been reminded of from some of our sisters is the issue regarding spousal abuse. And unfortunately, this is something as a community we have to talk about. And it's something as a community that we have to address. And it's something as a community that we need to come back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to find our answers, to give us the answers and to inspire us to use the modern means of dealing with some of these issues. And one of the ways in which a person will become aware and things that they should do when they are being abused as a spouse is first and foremost they need to acknowledge the abuse. And this is from Ahl al fi fin. This is from the people of knowledge in this field of marital counseling and spousal abuse. That one of the things and one of the common problems we find is that people do not acknowledge that they're being abused. And more often than not, this is the women, of course, that they are in a situation, the brother was an imam, the brother was a talib al-ilm, the brother was a sheikh, the brother was known for goodness, the brother was good in giving charity, whatever the case may be, and she marries him. Then she finds out that in fact he is a beast behind closed doors. And one of the first problems that sisters have and what makes that abuse be continual is they fail to acknowledge that they're being abused. For example, it's not something that happens one time or some issue, uh, some mistake, some misunderstanding, but we're talking about women being beaten, having bones broken, dislocated, uh, bruised, uh, abused physically, mentally, and spiritually by their spouses, told, told constantly that they are worthless or not giving them any attention and of just abusing them in the various ways of abuse. All of this goes against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us. The marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the marriage a place of mawadda wa rahma, a place of love and mercy. And when you don't find either love nor mercy in your marriage, you have to begin to assess it. And when you find, especially when there's no mercy, meaning that there's no mercy and it's to the extent of the abuse, physical abuse, you really need to become aware of that, you need to acknowledge that, and you need to go to the next phase. And the next phase is to reach out for help. And in contemporary Islam, what that meant is, of course, you had the families. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that we should appoint a guardian, for, uh, appoint a arbiter from her side and his side. That there should be this counseling, this shura, in order to rectify the situation. But for many of us, we don't have that. Many of the women, if they've embraced Islam, they don't have Muslim family to be able to do that. And Likewise, even if they have Muslim families, sometimes they're unwilling or there's just no means or they're far away and unable to assist. Likewise, from the other side, there's maybe no will from the man to seek counseling, to seek a qualified imam, a qualified scholar 
who can intervene and help the people uh, in their uh, counseling. And this is imperative. And as we mentioned prior to this, another means is for the women that they are able to, when they are reaching out for help, that if they cannot find that in the community and they are being physically beaten and harmed, then of course it's permissible as Ahl al-Ilm wa Ahl al the people of knowledge and the people of intellect, know that you can go and get help even outside the community if need be. Meaning if you have a husband that's beating you and oppressing you, harming you. I'm not talking about you, you are upset with him and you, uh, you know, because you found out he has another wife or something like this, but I'm talking about a husband who is harming you, who is hurting your person by harming you physically. Then if there is no means, the community is unwilling to help and the community is unable to help, then of course you need to get the authorities of your land to uh, deal with this perpetrator of abuse. So this is imperative that you find means to rectify because this is what Islam calls us, aslah baynukum, to make the sulh, to make the peace, to make the rectification, rectify your affair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kareem at-talaqum maratan fi imsaakum bi ma'roof o tasrihum bi ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah that <coughs> a talaq divorce is twice meaning before it becomes talaq al-ba'in meaning the the permanent divorce fa imsaakum bi ma'ruf wa tasrihum bi ihsan so either keep them in kindness in ma'ruf or free them uh in in ihsan with 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 kindness or righteousness and ma'roof ahabatifillah, when we talk about ma'roof, we're talking about goodness in every, in, in every form. So in a marital situation, of course, that's going to mean physically, mentally, and spiritually. So that we have to strive our best to be the best that we can as spouses. And in these situations, <clears throat> when a perpetrator of abuse is doing these crimes in the marital bond that this deception and this evil is a violation of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's twofold not only are you destroying and harming one of the servants of Allah Azza wa Jal, one of those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protects who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves in accordance with their iman who Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala <coughs> has entrusted you with. So it's absolutely a necessity, Habitifillah, that we be conscious of that and conscious of our duties, the haq of one another. And abuse is a violation of that. So with that being the case, it is for those women that are in those situations to realize that they have to come to grips and acknowledge this abuse. Because what we find is that many of the women still, they've been abused for years, beaten constantly. The husband demands extreme uh, demands and hardships upon them during their times of greatest needs. Meaning a woman, she perhaps can be pregnant and the man is harsh on her about cooking and cleaning and this and that and, you know, and even beating her. Even the, these, these scenarios are very uh, real scenarios. And with that being the case, Ahabatifillah, this is a violation of the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. And along with that, that servant needs to come to grips and acknowledge this. And this is one of the reasons why I want to articulate this and convey this message because there are so many sisters who don't even realize. We're not trying to encourage people to divorce. We're not encouraging families to separate, but we are encouraging sisters to seek the help and brothers to seek the help that they need. Because if you persist in a situation like this, not only does it destroy your family, a huge percentage of the women that go through these abuse, abusive scenarios, they end up uh, uh, leaving Islam, period. 
And this goes with those who are born Muslim and those who become Muslim, but especially those who revert to Islam because they only have what they reverted back to, what they reverted from to go back to. So it's a reversion, uh, you know, they are reverting and it's a full revolution, it's a full process. Leaving disbelief and darkness to the light of Islam, to only find out that in Islam you found that you were oppressed in, in and you found a worse life than you had than when you were in disbelief because you had a, a demon who was deceiving you and who was uh, imprisoning you and harming you and abusing you. So this is something very important that has to be put in perspective. And then those people will share the burden for having made the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave the religion of Allah, leave the worship of Allah and have a a horrible uh, image of what Islam is and what Islamic marriage is, which is incor incorrect. And so that is one of the importance that why it is so critical for sisters to realize when they are abused and to begin to make steps, to begin to uh, seek help and seek the support and seek to rectify. And you cannot remain in those situations because mostly they don't turn around. I don't know Personally, and this is only on a personal level. This is not based on any science, but I don't know any people who were wife beaters and this and that and the other and their marriages lasted. I don't know of any situations like that where it finally turned around after he's beaten her 27 times. Now he's a good Muslim. Now he doesn't, he doesn't harm his wife and he's so gentle and kind and brings her gifts. I, I don't know those scenarios. Those aren't usually the real scenarios. It's possible, but that's, it's not common. So what it means is you have to wake up. You always have to be aware of your situation and scenario. Likewise, I do want to make a, a point which is a bit off our topic, but I want to share this with you as well, that you have to realize also sometimes sisters are in excellent situations, but they don't like something from their husband. Not, he's not abusive, not an, uh, someone who, who harms them physically, not someone who does anything to her. In fact, there are men who provide and who are good Muslims. I know brothers who were who sisters want a divorce by morning, the night of consummation. What is this? This is not playing marriage. It's not a game. So, it's imperative habit of Allah is also for the sisters to realize that, hey, that uh, to be patient with their husbands but not patience with things that are uh, a total violation and devastation and destruction of your rights and of your humanity. No, that's not acceptable. That's not patience. That can actually turn into some sort of uh, taqlid and ta'asab ila dhulm, you know, uh, some sort of uh, pr blind following of, of, uh, of oppression and naivety that is being played upon. So it's imperative for our sisters to be aware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al kareem fa amsakuhunna bi ma'roof o farakuhunna bi ma'roof. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Talaq, when referring to the, those scenarios in which there must be separation in which it becomes a necessity, necessity. and this is an order and a decree for the man, uh, so this is during the Edda. So either take them back in kindness, you know, as your wife, as your full wife, giving her her rights, or leave her, you know, divorce her, make the divorce permanent, but with ma'ruf, in righteousness. We know that these sisters that are in abusive situations, they know this. They're looking for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're looking for these situations to be to be dealt with. And that's why the only thing that we can offer is advice of where you need to try to go and what you need to do. You need to acknowledge uh, the, this cycle of abuse. You need to not acknowledge when your environment is unsafe. You need to acknowledge when someone has very little chance or, and is not sincere about making ma'ruf for you, you know, correcting your situation. And one of the things, the people who are involved in these affairs, the, the, in, in the, the, uh, the professionals, that they mention that it's important to have safe communication, that you know, uh, the, a lot of abusive spouses, they chase up the, 
the women on their their social media and on their their email and other things and so it can be a great danger for them so it's imperative that the women also use safe uh, means of communication and private means of commu communication when it comes to a necessity to communicate communicate about these situations, meaning that they are really being abused and beaten and harmed and, and what have you. Uh, another important uh, tip uh, that we need to be aware of is that also that a woman in those situ situations, and this is in general, that we need to, uh, the men and the women, need to be conscious of, and we need to address our underlying issues that we have, that many of us, uh, we come into marriages and we have baggage. Sometimes the people have baggages, baggage from their, from their uh, time before being a Muslim, they were oppressed, homosexual relationships, um, they were abused sexually, mentally, spiritually, physically, whatever the case may be. They've been through.